for the fourth time in eight years, the Golden State Warriors are NBA champions, uh, led by their big three, Draymond Green, Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, beating Boston in Boston in game six, uh, and a pretty, like, demoralizing loss for Boston and for the Celtics fans, who really seemed like they were going through it in the second half there. Um, at first, it looked like this was going to just be a, a runaway type of Warriors game, and they were going to just cruise to a title uh, up by about 15 at halftime with a lead up to about 21, 22 points. Boston came out in the third, and, you know, it was a little bit more of the same. The Warriors kept seemingly hitting those those big shots to shut Celtics' runs down. Uh, as they happened, as they started to develop. But then at the end of the third quarter, something strange happened. As Al Horford strapped the team to his back and said, Guys, not like this. We're not going out like this. And he and Jalen Brown almost brought them all the way back. Um, cutting down a huge Warriors lead and making much more of a game of it than you would have expected. But unfortunately... Just didn't have enough. The Warriors were able to continue to rely on that core, as well as young players, specifically Jordan Poole, to just keep the game out of reach and secure their their fourth title. Steph Curry was named Finals MVP, um, and it was really cool because even in Boston they were getting like applause and war- there was a lot of Warriors fans in the arena. And it seemed like a lot of Boston fans stayed as well, just out of, like, appreciation for the team or for the series. I don't know. Um, but a lot of a lot of celebration for Steph in particular. And you could see it with his teammates, too. Like, everyone was so excited for him. And I think a little bit too much has been made about, um, about him not having a Finals MVP. And, like, as if the thought of him now having it means he has cemented his legacy. I think that's a little overblown. Um, I would argue he was pretty well established and uh, his legacy was pretty cemented before this. But now it's it's going to lead to a summer of uh, very hot takes and hyperbolic discussions, I'm sure. I've already seen Steph Curry's top 10, Steph Curry's top 5, Steph Curry's the best point guard ever. And that's just going to happen, and that's and that's okay. That's part of what makes uh, following the NBA so much fun is all of those all of those debates. But uh, for the game, um, Golden State shot the lights out from three, um, hitting uh, just under forty two percent of their threes. Uh, Steph Curry bounced back in a big way, not in a huge way, um, but still after hitting zero threes for the first time in his playoff career in Game Five. He comes out and hits six in game six. Uh, very fitting. Clay Thompson, it was unfortunately not a game six Clay performance tonight. He was five of 20, including two of eight from three. Finished with just 12 points. But more important than that, he played some incredible defense. The Warriors' defense here in the uh, first half and the fourth quarter, unbelievable. They were pressuring the Celtics in ways that the Celtics just never were able to counter and adjust to. Uh, Klay Thompson deserves a special shout out for that because I know people were saying that he looked especially cooked defensively coming back from all of those injuries. But as the series went on, he really found his footing. And if, if that's an indication to him continuing to return to form, then, you know, the Warriors could be looking at a pretty a pretty deep run next season as well, assuming all health. Um, Draymond Green had another inspired game tonight. He came out very, very energetic and ready to kind of just do all of the little things that he had built his reputation on. Uh, he was hustling. He was playing hard defense. He was making great passes. He was fighting for those rebounds. He was in particularly really, like looking for his shot and looking to make the Celtics pay for not covering him. He hit two threes, but it somehow felt like he had hit like eight because both times he hit the threes, he did like the three celebration, which was kind of funny because like, I think those were the first two threes he's hit this entire series, but that's okay. That's, you know, you, you take the good and the bad with Draymond. It's okay. 
Um, and really, this was just one of those performances by by the team where you know it, they could have collapsed fully like they did in game one. They built that big lead and the Celtics fought back, but they didn't. They held on in Boston, which is impressive given how out of control that fan base is. And they survived every rally the Celtics tried to throw their way. Um, this was a game, too, that was not um, really decided by officiating. It was a surprise that Scott Foster was not on this officiating crew, just because it felt like this was like the perfect setting to have him come in and get like 45 fouls called and, you know, really muck this game up. But instead, eight free throws for the Warriors, 12 for the Celtics. It's a lot of just letting them play. Uh, and what it came down to really was, I think, the defensive performance that the Warriors had on on the Celtics' key players. I mentioned Al Horford had a great third quarter. Uh, up until the third quarter, though, he had only taken two shots. Uh, I think actually maybe even just one shot in the first half. Jalen Brown was uh, the leader for the Celtics tonight, finished with 34 points. Um, and he was really, like picking up the slack, he was trying to be aggressive, he was trying to get his shots up, and, you know, some of those just aren't his game. Um, really, I think this is a testament to the Warriors' ability to really shut down Jason Tatum, because I don't know if it's going to come out that he was really hurt, or what the deal is going to be, but Andrew Wiggins, Gary Payton the second, and Draymond Green, uh, Clay Thompson as well, all of them deserve credit for just how how much they they locked Tatum down, and in particular Wiggins. This has been a huge season for him. It's been a huge playoffs for him. And here they hold Tatum to six of eighteen shooting, thirteen points. They really frustrated him, and you know on top of that, they didn't let him beat the team with his playmaking, which is something that happened in Game One of this series. Tatum finishes with seven assists, but every pass was hard. They forced tons of turnovers. Uh, that was the other big thing coming into this game is the turnover battle. Boston had been very sloppy with the ball in the games that they'd lost and a little bit better in the games that they won. So Golden State as well. I mean, it's a, it's a broken record at this point. Turnovers, they're loose with the ball. They kind of, like, can be, and that's a terrible thing and a good thing because it lets them play that up-tempo, free-flowing style. But it's also maddening because they just throw the ball. Like, Draymond Green had, like, three straight possessions where he tried to throw a behind-the-back pass to Clay Thompson, and two of them were whistled dead because of fouls or something, and then the third one, he just threw it out of bounds because he misjudged it. And, like, it's crazy. It's crazy to watch a professional team play with that type of freedom. But it's also part of their charm and what makes it so fun to watch. Uh, but tonight, Boston, 21 turnovers. Jason Tatum, a terrible stat if you are him or a Celtics fan. The first player in NBA history to have triple-digit turnovers in a single series. Um, not what you want. <laughs> uh, you don't want to be the first in anything related to turnovers unless it's the first player to have zero turnovers in a series. But uh, it's just, you know, it's funny, and I hesitate to say this because Jason Tatum's only 24. Uh, you hear it all the time. Oh, he's only this old. Oh, he's only that old. And this was the, everyone in the Celtics. This was their first trip to the finals. This Warriors team had experience on their side. And it showed in a lot of instances, uh, in particular these road game performances and the ability to win when Steph wasn't having good shooting nights, Steph's ability to carry the team as needed, and everyone on the Warriors just stepping up defensively. Like, even Steph was out there trying to, you know, be an obstacle on defense and, like, trying to make it hard for whoever he was guarding. And there were multiple times that Boston got, like, Al Horford switched on to Steph Curry and Al Horford would take him into the post and then just throw it out for a three and it's like I understand trying to get your teammate the open look but like just go like you just go over him like Al Horford was cooking in that third quarter and he would consistently look to make like the the smart quote-unquote smart play 
but it just felt weird. Like, it just felt like a lot of settling was going on. And in particular, Jason Tatum really settled for some bad contested shots. It I think it forced the issue more for, for Jalen and for Marcus Smart. Uh, Derek White continued to just have a very uh, low confidence type of game. His defense was once again um, as good as could be on someone like Steph Curry. But... This was a this was a game where you know the Celtics were gonna need their big players to come through, and you know it, it just didn't happen. I don't think this is like the end of Boston. I've heard a lot of people already say they want to you know trade Jalen Brown for Bradley Beal, do some crazy thing to shake up the team. I doubt that's gonna happen. I think they may be in search of another um, point guard that they can deploy. Marcus Smart had a very good season. Um, defensive player of the year had a very good season at the point for the team but tonight five uh, sorry five fouls nine points nine assists six rebounds four of 12 from the field and to me it just felt like you know he's excelled as a playmaker and he's been very good at uh, moving the ball and helping the ball move more which was something that was uh, reportedly a very big gripe of his early on when the team was having chemistry issues but 4 of 12 from the field, it just feels like, and I, I don't like saying this because it sounds so, like, hot takey, but, like, it feels like they need someone that can play that traditional point guard role that knows, like, okay, hey, the team's kind of struggling a little bit. Time to go get a bucket for them. Like, hey, I got to call my own number and get a bucket because these guys are putting the clamps on all of my guys and I need to, I need to weather the storm. I need to stop the bleeding. Like, Mike Conley... Patty Mills, um, one of those older veteran guards would be exactly what Boston needs right now. Um, who knows if you know what the what the off is going to hold for them? I don't really want to get into all of that right now. Um, really, the the last thing I just want to say is that is how cool this is for the Warriors. Like I know you know a lot of people got tired of. The Warriors constantly winning and being in the finals and the super team with Kevin Durant. And it's tough because before that, before that super team and all of that happened, they were like the NBA darlings. Like they were that team that, you know, just overachieved like crazy, burst onto the scene and just took the league by storm. And this team now really captured that essence for for me, at least. Like, I, I don't know if it it's a similar consensus uh, everywhere else. But like for me, I really enjoyed watching this team. I really enjoyed um, seeing, you know, a rejuvenated Steph, seeing Clay Thompson back on the court, um, Jordan Poole's development, the young players like Kaminga and Moody who did not even play tonight. They even had like some of my favorite like fringe players like uh, Bielitsa and I really like Gary Payton II as well, Juan Toscano Anderson. And to see those players, like, two years ago, the Warriors had the worst record in the league. Like, they missed the playoffs the, the last two years. And last year, Steph Curry was saying, you don't want to see us next year. And that was with no Klay Thompson. He had already been, like, Steph had already been banged up a bit as well. Draymond was banged up as well. The team had traded for Andrew Wiggins at this point. And he said, you're not going to want to see us next year after they got eliminated in the playing game. Uh, by the Memphis Grizzlies, actually. And he said that, and now here they are a year later with the title. They all said when Clay comes back, it's game on, and people didn't really believe him. One, because Clay Thompson was coming back from some serious injuries, and two, just because the West is, is pretty good. Like, it's pretty full of talented teams. Um, but here we are. The Warriors have turned it around in two years, and not only that, but they've done it with the original core intact, and they've infused enough new players that this run can sustain for probably the rest of, of this core's careers. Like, Steph is 34, uh, and he's probably, you know, got who knows how many years left. It. He's the greatest shooter we've ever seen, so he can probably play till he's like 45, just hitting open corner shots at some point. But Kaminga, Moody, James Wiseman, if he gets healthy, Jordan Poole, like, they clearly are the future of this team. And being able to kind of rebuild and retool all at once, um, I didn't really think it was possible. 
I'm really impressed at how the Warriors have put all of this together. Um, I'm really happy for those guys like Juan Toscano Anderson and those players who were on those like underperforming bad injured Warriors teams because it's so often those players like get shipped out or get you know picked up by other teams or put on waivers or whatever and the Warriors kept almost all of those guys and to see them you know be a part of the celebration was was a really cool thing um Clay Thompson not missing a chance to be petty. Really, none of them missed the chance to be petty afterwards, I should say. Steph had an incredible celebration where he was, like, answering questions and talked about, like, Brian Winhorst saying that they had, like, checkbook wins and then, like, Kendrick Perkins and other guys on first take saying they would never win another uh, trophy or Steph would never win another trophy. Uh, Clay Thompson called out Jaron Jackson Jr. of the Grizzlies just so much pettiness. You like in the best, the happiest moment of the year for these guys. I'm happy to see that that you know the the pettiness withstands. Um, but I think that's everything. The free throws, three point uh, turnovers. Um, I think honestly that's everything. Boston fans, I would not be you know despondent. Yes, it's probably gonna feel like your team gave away a trophy, but. This is a really talented team. I think Brad Stevens, the GM, had a lot of success. I think Ime Udoka, the coach, obviously this was a huge first year for him. Um, hopefully the team builds on that. I'll be really curious. I don't think Brad Stevens is going to be one to shy away from making those offseason moves and shaking up this roster as he sees fit. But it's probably going to be a little limited because the team uh, doesn't have many picks right now. Their first round pick is Derek White, who, you know fit in really well with what that team wanted to do but just the consistency issues so I don't know where they're going to look to upgrade what they're going to look to do but all signs right now point to this being a very strong competitive team and if Jason Tatum is as Kobe influenced as it really seems he is then he will probably attack this offseason um, like you would hope that someone who studies and idolizes Kobe Bryant would because that's what Kobe would do he would be in the gym right now so who knows we'll we'll see what happens with that um ultimately though this night's about the Warriors Steph Curry uh didn't need it for his legacy but he got it for his legacy and here we are uh four-time champions and then lastly shout out to Andre Iguodala played just one minute tonight injuries really limited his postseason run with the team but you could see how valuable he was to this team even just on the bench uh, there was a moment where Gary Payton the second like got a stupid foul and got pulled out of the game and like the camera like lingered on him going to the bench and it picked up Iguodala like just like saying like you can't do that dude like what are you doing this is the finals come on and like I'm sure that wasn't how he said it but it was really cool to see like because you could see him you know you could see the the meaning in the exchange like you could see Iguodala was serious and you could see that Gary Payton was like absorbing and listening and hearing what he was saying it wasn't just like an eye roll like okay dude and that was really cool so they put Steve Kerr puts him in for uh, one minute at the end of the game along with the uh, Warriors starters so that was a really cool moment too to kind of see that that group reunited um and four titles in eight years that's that's crazy. That's a dynasty right there. And, and they're in good position to to not slow down from here as long as um, everyone stays healthy. And Steve Kerr, nine rings now, five as a player, four as a coach. Like, unbelievable. He is, he is quietly building a resume as one of the most successful people the league has ever seen. And, you know, say what you will about his adjustments and his coaching styles or anything, but, like, he, he earned it this series. He did a very good job adjusting to what the Celtics were throwing their way this entire series. And I'm impressed. I'm surprised because he is someone that I've criticized for being too rigid before with his adjustments and his rotations. But he was really flexible this series. Um, and it paid off. They're champions. So there you have it. Enjoy enjoy the, the parties and the parade Bay Area. Um, I can only imagine how that's going to be the next couple days. Um, let me know your thoughts on the series, on the Warriors winning, on the Celtics and their future. 
uh, please, anything, let me know. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Um, enjoy the weekend, and I'll be back.